That tunnel is called Brahmanadi in the science of meditation or tantra or yoga or whatever you want to call it. It's one of the names. If you're looking at light at the end of a tunnel, by definition, by your statement, you are at the entrance of the tunnel. Because you wouldn't see a tunnel if you were not at the entrance, right? Well, if you go up that tunnel, then you see the light. I saw the light and I was bathed in the light. Well, you haven't gotten there yet because you haven't gotten to the source of the light. But what most of us do most of the time is we back off out of fear. That's the way this process works. It's just the way it works. But somewhere along the way, you encounter the fact that space emerged out of a point. X, Y, Z axis emerged out of a point. The light, that's the ocean of light, emerged out of a point. A point, one of the names of that is Bindu. Bindu literally translates as point. It's the dot on the Om symbol. These dots are, it used to be the cross. There was never, the original cross was, was not from Christianity as a murder weapon. It was, it was a dot with four things coming out. It was meaning there's a point and stuff comes out from it. That was the original meaning of that. And then we've turned it into a cross because we may draw it like a cross. You know, and people were killed on crosses. It started as a point coming out. So he said, now you'll be giving piercing of the Bindu. And he also told me, and don't come back. That was the insight of two weeks before. And I found out, oh. Now when he said that, did I get excited? No. I was so stuck, I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. Nothing. He told me, wait just a certain amount of time. And I waited. Not because I was waiting in anticipation, but just time goes by. And so finally that happened. Shaktipat can be given by touch, as he told in that story. It can also be given by transmission when you're not in the physical presence of anybody. It can be put in a glass of water. There's, there's different ways in which this grace happens or seems to happen. It can seem to happen through another person. He tells a story himself. The one time he was up in the Himalayas and his teacher told him, you know, go down to, to Hardwar, so long with the time to get down there. Take the train down to Kanpur and go find Swami so and so, and I want you to give him Shakti Pot. He was young. He said, I can't do that. How, how can I do that? He said, You just go do it. So he said, He's walking around, he's starting to touch things to see if he's got this power. Nothing was happening. But then he got to Kanpur, he got in front of this Swami, and he said, all of a sudden, something picked his arm came up. He wasn't doing it. His arm came up, and he touched this fellow right in the forehead, and the Swami went, bang, he was off in Samadhi, gone. And the way I like to say it playfully is his boss, I call my teacher boss, I like the term. So his boss got a twofer, you see. He, he got... Shaktipat given to the guy he wanted it to, but he also got this young man, Swami Rama. He got him to see that this is not about me as a person, and it's not about you as a person. It's about God himself, herself, Shakti. I don't care what word you use. But there's a grace thing that happens. And it works through us. So it was a way in which he got him and he taught him that lesson. And the way things unfolded for me, why didn't he come as a great master and say, okay, now my son, I'm going to touch you in the forehead. That's not what he did. He told me it's going to happen. As I noticed over time, this is what he'd do. He'd show me something, and then I was, he'd tell me something, and then I would see, be seen it later. And I've come to see that he did this thing, somebody did this thing, tradition, guru, grace, somebody did this thing in such a way that I can stand here and emphatically say, you do not have to be touched in the forehead by Jesus or Buddha or anybody. If we do the thing, the grace will come. You don't have to go join a cult, do a thing. You don't have to come here. We don't have to do anything. Oops, except I need to stop talking. Somebody was supposed to tell me to shut up. Shaktipada. Is it in the beginning? Yes. It is in the stages along the way? Yes. But the real one is the one that breaks the final barrier. That's the one. Never give up. 
but let go. I can't tell you the number of people I have met who privately, quietly, behind the scenes, some are well-known teaching people. I don't mean locally, I mean around. The inside, they're saying, I don't believe I, I really can do it in this lifetime. I know a woman from Bombay, India, who was, was for years involved with the longest time knowing teaching institution, studying Sanskrit, studying Yoga Sutras, and one day, she, the time she was about 30, one of the teachers said to her something like, well, you don't really think you're going to get enlightened, do you? And she was shocked. She suddenly realized, what we're having here is not sadhana, we're having Sanskrit lessons. And so she ran into this, she checked it out with somebody else, just found ways to get into conversations. And she found that this was what was being behind the scenes. People weren't actually thinking that they can attain it in this lifetime. And here it doesn't mean final moksha and you have no more karma. It means that for even one second you have literally stood on the top of the mountain of the spiritual mountain. And what did she do? <laughs> like people have been doing for a very long time. She got disgruntled, got confused, and came to Rishikesh. <laughs> and that's where we met. And it's a story. So just to say, never give up. Never give up. Till your last breath in this body, don't give up. Jesus said, the Father and I are one, me too. I'm not saying you go out in the street and tell everybody that, but in your heart, at least in your heart, do you believe that's true? Then tell yourself that. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. I'll be quiet now. Oh. Soham.